Let's get uh, over to Steve Leesman. He's got the November ADP employment report. Steve. Good morning, Becky. 103,000 uh, ADP su suggesting that private payrolls rose by 103,000 across the United States. That's against an estimate of 128,000. They revised down a little bit to 106,000, uh, the October report from 113,000. Looking at it by sector, uh, 14,000 down on goods, 117,000 up in services. And you can see that this is lighter, quite a bit lighter, as it has been over the last several months than the uh, estimate for non-farm payrolls for Friday, which will include government and the private sector. By business size, small uh, business uh, stepping back a bit, just up 6,000, but medium and large size businesses doing pretty well, up 68 and 33,000 respectively. By industry, some interesting developments here. Trade transporting utilities up 55,000, education health services up 44. That second category has been a stalwart. Uh, but look at what happened to leisure and hospitality down 7,000. That has been a major addition to employment over the last several months. It's the first decline that I can see for quite a while. Manufacturing also down uh, by 15,000. Um, and then this is interesting because of all the data from ADP, this is probably some of their best data that they have. Uh, it's the wage data and uh, job stayers 5.6%. That continues to go down and job changers 8.3%. Again, that continues to go down. Uh, Becky, uh, uh, this is overall, I think, what the Fed, what the market is looking for in this March or hope for uh, a slower economy that is not necessarily crashing. 100,000 is right in line with what you might expect given the uh, growth of the population, Becky. All right, Steve, stay with us. We've got a lot more to talk about. Uh, we want to bring in Neela Richardson. She's chief economist at ADP. And, and Neela, how would you describe the declines that, that we've seen overall? Or the, Hi, the lower than anticipated I, gains, I should say. Ray, I think it's the end of an era. If you look at that industry breakdown that Steve just walked us through, to see leisure and hospitality, it's negative 7,000 in the month of November signifies that the labor market has changed. Uh, late, this sector, leisure and hospitality, was the dominant sector for the past two years. It took the hit of the pandemic. It was only 11 percent of the jobs market going into the pandemic, took 40 percent of the losses. It's the reason why we saw outsized page gains. It was the only sector that showed double-digit wage gains by ADP payroll data, and it did so for 16 consecutive months. To see that drop in leisure and hospitality signifies a, a few things. One, we're not going to see outsized page growth, pay growth. Two, other sectors of the economy will have to do their part, including those interest rate sensitive good sectors that have been slumping this whole year. And three, small firms that are over concentrated in leisure and hospitality are no longer going to get that boost from the sector that had been dominating. So in that sense, uh, this is a, a, a shift in the labor market yet again going into 2024. Neela, how, how does this match up? I mean, Steve made the point that Look, the market has been calling for a weaker economy, but not one that necessarily goes into a deep recession of, of any sort. Um, how would you characterize the overall jobs market uh, historically in, in terms of how it aligns with the economy right now? Right now, it's solid. We're treading water uh, in terms of trend. Uh, we're seeing leisure and hospitality go back to trend. But there's still some weakness in the labor market that I don't like. I don't like to see manufacturing slump the way it has, even though the strikes are over. We didn't see that big boost come back into the November. So there's some weakness in the labor market that I think is concerning. But overall, big picture, yeah, we're still on track for that soft landing that's been talked about. Uh, the weakness, though, should stay top of mind in the labor market. Hey, Steve, interesting point. You made that, that this is what Wall Street has been wanting. Yesterday, they got that with the JOLTS report, too, that, that job turnovers was the lowest in two and a half yeah. years. But yesterday, the S&P and the Dow both closed down anyway. Not, not that you're, I'm asking you to make market prog prognostications, but it, it's a little weird to see Wall Street getting what, it's want, what it wants and to not see big gains on any of that. Maybe that's because we had such a strong month of November. You know, uh, Becky, you're, the way I look at things is you never quite know when the market smelled something out. And I felt like the market had a pretty good run, if I'm not mistaken, 
leading up to that data, it could have been a sell the news thing with a question being for y'all to debate as far as I'm concerned, which is what's the next driver here? OK, let's dial in a soft landing. Let's dial in the idea that the Fed is cutting rates. Now tell me where profits are going to come from. Tell me what's going to grow stocks, what's going to get people interested in, 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 in the stock market. Um, I am very interested, and I'm sure Neela is too, in what's going to happen at 830. We're going to get the productivity numbers. We're also going to see declining unit labor costs. I ran some numbers this morning that showed that unit labor costs lead wages by about two months. Um, and that has been a big positive for the economy. And the question becoming, is it a big positive for companies? Are they finding ways to turn greater productivity and to turn that productivity into profits? That's a question where once you get done with the adjustments that Neela was talking about, it gets down into the nuts and bolts of making money or not. Neela? Well, when you look at the payroll data and, you know, making money or not is the key question here. Um, when you look at the payroll data, what you see is the premium from switching jobs has never been as small as it is right now. Uh, the market has loosened up in terms of labor supply. So in that sense, if wages have been a drag to corporate or earnings, we're going to see less of a drag going forward. Uh, but it does beg the question, what is going to be that dominant sector? That's the question I have. Because right now, we're seeing services still carry the water for the economy, especially education and health care. But what else is going to bring those productivity gains? Uh, these customer-facing, uh, client-facing industries are not known to be productivity boosters. That comes from manufacturing. That comes from tech. That comes from information. And if we're not seeing the job gains match those standards for productivity, it does call into question who's going to be making money next year. Steve, real quickly, looking ahead, Friday, what's the expectation for the jobs report? 190,000, uh, which is still pretty darn strong. I think it it's is. interesting. That would be a number that would not be in line with this softer landing idea. That would still be accelerating. I will say ADP has a kind of spotty record of hitting the uh, number of the BLS private sector. But one thing it did do was it did signal the downshift in hiring uh, much uh, pr several months earlier. So we'll see if the downshift in the BLS follows the downshift in ADP. That will be interesting to me. I don't look to ADP for the precise number. I look for it more for the trend. And the right. trend in ADP has been back towards normalcy.